Ready? Hello and welcome to Rhythm and Pixels, a video game music podcast. This is episode 26-2 and we are hosts. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernay. And every week we listen to great video game music from all consoles and all generations. We find a topic, we dig into it, and we have fun listening to all of that jazz. But this week it may not be all jazz. It might be a little techno, it might be a little game music. I don't know what we... Rock and roll. I honestly don't know what Pernell got. So, Pernell, what did you get me for Christmas? Um, I got you narcolepsy and a dash of cherry coke. You know um, what? My, uh, my, my, my fatigue has come back. The fatigue that I was fighting back in April um, is sort of like rearing its head. So um, I'm trying to eat as much as possible again. And I should probably get out of the way earlier than later in the show. If I seem a little lethargic today, well, that would be because I literally came in right after doing a double red donation. So um i am riding that wave of so we'll see how that pans out over the course of the episode i did eat like three takoyaki balls though good and uh, onigiri bowl so everything's coming up baller for me (laughs) so for pernell's balling today that's right i got so many more to go but but you hate that when people are saying like oh do you play basketball and you're like no i play persona (laughs) <laughs> they asked me that at the blood bank. Too. Oh, yeah? And the lady said, I bet people ask you that a lot. I'm like, they do. <laughs> they ask yep. all okay. the time. From I now on, too. you have to say that you're an ex-Sixers uh, player. No, I just say I'm a miniature golf pro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I for some reason, I was, around. I was imagining like a small... <laughs> I usually ask people. Like a small person uh, uh, golfing. I'm sorry. We have some guests <laughs> on the show today. Um, last minute guests that we decided to, to have join with us because we're since we're doing things on Discord like 99% of the time anyway, like why not include some cool people? So we have um, Austin in the top right. Hello. (laughs) Happy to be here. (laughs) Greetings all. Greetings. He's from the band uh, WASD, WASD, WASD. um, But anyway, awesome. All correct. Awesome game music, (laughs) uh, guitar shredding, um, aficionado. Can I say that? Thank you. Awesome. Yes, you you certainly can. I don't know if it's true or not, but you can say it. (laughs) It's true. It's true. Don't don't fool yourself. And then in the top left, we have Josh, all the way from the Runaway Four, and the bonus stage um, VGM um, rock concert things next to Austin. They both came here. <laughs> very what? very apt and eloquent. Thank you. For that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm really happy to have you both on the show. Um, why don't you tell us, tell our listeners, what's going on? What what are you guys doing new? I'll start with um, Josh. What are we doing new? Um, well, yeah, it's it's 2021. 20, why don't we get off on a good foot? So this coming um, Saturday, uh, January 9th, uh, we are putting on a virtual convention. Um, normally, myself, uh, Josh, at Bonus Stage, we would do uh, like a monthly virtual concert on the second Saturday of each month. And, uh, and Dwelling of Duels also does oh, a monthly right. Uh, remix competition and so we decided to put our two heads together and put to, put together something that's a little bit more than the sum of our parts and have a full day streaming event with uh, live performances pre-recorded performances uh, the dwelling of duels monthly competition as well as some panels and some live gaming that is exciting exciting stuff all really really cool stuff i know i'll be tuning in and um, if it's an all day long thing i'll just leave it in the background and annoy my family all day long uh, you know, Perfect. Uh, for all the uh, uh, meals. that <laughs> we, we will be the ones annoying your family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't Definitely worry. Not yeah, me. Don't, <laughs> don't put that on yourself. <laughs> you will be the conduit to get the annoyance into their home. <laughs> and uh, tell us a little bit more about the Dwelling of Duels and um, WASD. Yeah, yeah. So Dwelling of Duels, for those who are not familiar, uh, it's a video game remix competition that's been going on for 15 plus years now where we have a monthly theme that's put out such as like water level or Zelda music or some other kind of things like that. And uh, competitors submit remixes of game music that fits that category. Uh, All the songs are presented anonymously at the end of the month and we have a whole listening party and a shindig where we listen to them all and, and the community gets together to vote on the winners. Normally we have a huge listening party event at MAGFest every year. Mm -hmm. 
So that's what this month would be, right? This would be our MAGFest month, which we normally go all out for. But of course, since MAGFest isn't happening this year, and who knows if it will be happening in the future, um, but we're we're moving it to a uh, to an online format and crossing over with bonus stage to make the bonus duels event. <laughs> we are literally crossing prizes. our streams. Literally. <laughs> well. One thing's for sure, though. I'm pretty sure that no matter how things play out this year, there will be likely some live format on the oh, East yeah. Coast. Right. <laughs> so I foresee you still getting some live event in January. Definitely. No doubt about that. We'll go wherever all the VGM nerds gather. Here, here to that. Right. We're not going to comment on, on any of the current events, but we will say that you know we support all of our uh, artist friends and the local artists and, and everyone who's, whose enthusiasm has been driving their own communities and mm-hmm. we want to support them as much as possible. So hence, hence this little um, you know, power, power grouping of super friends on today's show. I couldn't think of a better word for it. But super friends. Super friends. Power grouping of super friends. Yeah. <laughs> yes. oh, let's, just, let's print that. Yeah. Warm up, <laughs> that's sparkling that's, water. That's my next t-shirt, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Um, also, um, before we get the show started proper, I want to say that if you go to rhythmandpixels.com slash merch, we have new t-shirts. We have new um, designs for you to put onto your body, walk around outside, and display your body with our logo on it. It's really not our logo. It's the House of the Dead logo, but it says Rhythm and Pixels instead. And um, <laughs> the initial P, all in Japanese, except for the giant P, which I'm going to get, like, Purnell, like, a, like a sweater and a mask it. and a t-shirt. You did? <laughs> yeah, so if you, hey, if you're willing to reimburse it, I'll take it. I will reimburse it. Because I, I want, I like, want like, your entire wardrobe to say initial P on it. <laughs> I was like, I looked, I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I need to get that. I, 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 it must happen. Yeah. So I ended up getting the premium hoodie version of it. And, and I didn't for, even remember yeah. to put the darn code in because the code was still relevant at the time. And I just like, no, I wanted so much. <laughs> Screw discount. <laughs> yeah, we might, we might have a special discount. Maybe not. Um, next month on the for the for the the next month stream but if you can see on the stream i'm wearing the run vgm shirt nice which is super dope gorgeous i'm really proud of it and i want everyone to wear it because i like running and i like vgm so um everyone should get this shirt (laughs) but okay that i interpreted that that as like actually running like vgm like a scene being in charge of oh like run dot vgm (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's actually yes they're all accurate. C colon slash run dot VGM, um, and it'll, it'll play for you. It's just the Rystar soundtrack from the Sega Genesis over and over again. That's all I care about. Um, all right. So, uh, Pranel, this week's episode is all about the past year, the good and the bad. There's been a lot of bad, but there's been a lot of good, sort of, and um, we're going to take all that stuff personally, <laughs> like what was personally Don't good, know. what was personally bad. Um, and we have a few um, track suggestions from listeners, and we have... Um, some testimonials as well. And then um, a little ways into the show, we have a special quiz. I don't know if you'll find it hard or if you find it easy, but you will find it obtuse. And we'll, get- well, well <laughs> obtuse is where I live, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not stressing that. Though, one thing worth asking before we get fully started, Absolutely. because it's a general topic, it's the first episode of 2021, and people tend to have that sort of rabble about... Uh, resolutions but we're not here to talk about four resolutions we're talking about vg video game resolutions whether they be of the playing or the music listening or music creation variety so do any of you guys happen to have any video game resolutions for 2021 well i'm i'm currently trying to work on my 4k gaming rig so that's the resolution i'm working on okay so you're you're looking to have the whole thing rocked out before the end of the year (laughs) yeah yeah literally a resolution but um but yeah that's, oh that's he went for that joke oh. <laughs> <laughs> how about you Austin? is there anything in your uh, your backlog that you'd like to complete this year game wise yes uh, all 500 games in my steam library i want to beat them all this year uh, oh. that's my resolution every year well good luck with that <laughs> that sounds like a pernell we'll resolution <laughs> yeah right yeah for sure i'm cool. actually very interested in trying to get um I, I did a lot of music, like video game cover creation this year, but there's one project in particular that I've been working on for almost five years now, and that is the second WASD album that I am trying to get finished sometime this year. Exciting. Yeah. 
Hopefully it actually happens. How, how many tracks will, should we expect on this this bad boy? I think it's like 14 tracks. Okay. They're all arranged. I just have to go through and polish the recordings and then mix them. But it's this this year has been like, you know, I didn't gotta, get a lot done. You got to sneak a La Mulana 2 cover in there somewhere. Just a little I, bit. I, I haven't even listened to the La Mulana 2 soundtrack yet. Oh, like, God. It's I so need good. to. I know. I, oh, I'm ashamed of myself to admit that because I love the first soundtrack so much. It's okay. All that matters is that you you're going to retro, you're going to rectify that situation. <laughs> All that matters is that you're going to do what I say. Uh, no, no, <laughs> this, is, this is specifically tailored towards <laughs> the shared love that we have for the La Mulana titles. So it just needs to be done. Looking over, we are the- a small a small minority of uh, a small but vocal fan base of La Mulana fans. Yes, that's right. Um, we, we we try to get them on the show. We have our, our friend Carlos come on the show. Um, we have a special like Facebook th- group chat of uh, Cam, our friend Cam and Carlos and Pernell and myself just trying to play through and we're all like sharing information, <laughs> trying it's to so beat hard. these guys. It's so hard. Um, uh, in the chat, we have Buttsbo. He says um, he's trying to complete Castlevania 3. That's a tough You one. can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Like when we started Rhythm and Pixels chat, I'm almost positive that the first game we chose was Castlevania 3. Um and a couple people ended up taking a crack at it, and I ended up beating it that during that block on the with the Japanese cart, which I had never played mm. up to that point. And I can tell you right now, the game was way harder than I remember, unless you pick Alucard. Cart. <laughs> if you pick Alucard, Cart, you're in a little bit better shape, except for that stupid block dropping section that can go to hell five times over. <laughs> but otherwise, rock it out. You can do it. Do it in January, even. I think you do it in January. Um, yeah, I'll play it with you. Just let me know if you take a crack at yeah, it. Yeah, Pernell will play it again. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds really enthusiastic run about it. Once it yeah. uh, <laughs> Pernell, Pernell, what about you? Is there anything that you're excited about um, getting into this year? Honestly, not really. Um, my, I've been kind of in a weird lost limbo state mm-hmm. lately. but So I haven't put a lot of thought into stuff like that. But what I can say is that I somehow already beat my first game of 2021, and it's only the second. <laughs> so that's very Oh, did you finish Control? Impressive. Did you finish Control? No. no. Oh. I started and completed Yuppie Psycho in one day. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Wow. I didn't put it down the entire day. I don't know how that worked, but <laughs> in a rare case of my antics, I played through an entire game in one sitting. I was saying like so, that's why we that's why we, no one heard for you from you from like for like two days. <laughs> nah, it was more like that was a blessing to take me out of my stupor for a oh, bit. Because I was like, I need something to do. I'll boot this up, and I was like, I need to just keep going. This is something I don't want to put down now. This is an intriguing premise. It'll come up on the show later, so I'll, I can describe the game and what it is later in the show. I but, did the um, same thing with. Uh, Costume Quest on Halloween. I played through the whole thing that it's day. So good. That was costume a fun Quest one. is fantastic. And the thing is, like later on like, this year, like last year, I see there's a game that came out that totally wished it was Costume Quest. It was called Costume Kingdom. Oh. Don't buy Costume Kingdom. It was oh. not good. It was not oh. Costume Quest Part Two. <laughs> it, right, it, was <clears throat> it wishes it was Costume Quest Two, but they did the whole knock on the doors and it's either trick or treat. Um, they had the whole costume okay. to give different ability on the map. And you love everything that Costume Quest does, but all that was inferior. Mm. That's unfortunate. That's a it's a cool premise. I well, agree. Like when it came up, I was like, I gotta play this, and I beat the whole game. But I was like, oh, there's so much more they could have done here. Well, last year I finally started Persona Five, and so this year I will finish it because I'm playing it just about every weekend. So I'll probably be done by November, right? Is that how that works? Honestly, that's not too <laughs> far off. I mean, you just beat the second palace. And I wouldn't say how many there are, but that would be a spoiler in itself. Okay, yeah, but, I'm, I'm starting the third. I know there's like five more characters I'm going to run in. I don't know, man. It's it's a big game. I'm happy to have an RPG that or a JRPG that I can just like, just, you know, f- just fall into again. Just watch watch stat numbers go up and watch, you know. I, I really feel for the characters in this game, too. Like, the, the, the adults, every adult in this game is failing the children, failing the teenagers. And I just, I really, I really feel supportive about them. And it's taking everything in me not to play every track from this game on our show. But I'm going to, I'm going to. Honestly, not I've already to. started on some of them. So, ha! <laughs> I know that. That's right. <laughs> already chipped away at it. Um, I will tell you, one of our songs is going to be in our future episode with Hammock from KVGM, um, where we're going to do all buddy cop 
sounding music and definitely have a track from Persona 5 <laughs> for the Buddy Cop episode. Um, all right, so let's get into um, today's episode all about today's 2020. Um, all right, so since we had Buttsbow in the chat, I'm going to pick from Buttsbow's um, selection. This is from the game Friday Night Funkin', which is an indie game you can find on itch.io and Newgrounds. Don't know much about it. Looks kind of cute. Um, the composer is Kawaii Sprite, so that's cute, right? It's a cute sprite. Um, and the track is called Fresh. And we'll read the testimonial when we get back. <laughs> that was fresh from Friday Night Funkin', composed by Kawaii yeah. Sprite, and that was by um, that was picked by Buttsbo. And Buttsbo would like to say, <laughs> That's a- "There it is again." It's a, it, I thought we took care of the echo cancel. <laughs> uh, he says, um, "For this 2020 related episode, I wanted to suggest a track from a game released this year, but maybe a bit unusual for the show." One that is actually a web slash browser game. The track is fresh from the game Friday Night Funkin', originally created by a team of four for the Ludum Dare 47 Game Jam, and later released as a web game in the creative community of Newgrounds.com. It's a cartoony rhythm game, which it kind of sounds like it, um, in which you go through music battles against who seems to be your girlfriend's overprotective and kind of demonic father, among other characters who get in your way. I've never been particularly good at rhythm games, but after first playing in November, I'm still coming back because of how catchy the soundtrack is with its beeping vocals. Um, So for evident reasons, this was a bigger year for online events. Um, Personally, I also participated in a few online game jams, which was a good source of creative motivation. So that also got me in the mood to highlight a track from the web indie game dev scene. If you liked what you heard, you can go check out the game for free. And um, and this is Rob speaking now. I'm going to have links to this game on the show notes for this episode. Um, what did I you say? It's I was like, it's like, actually pretty fitting too that like, that like one of the tracks ended up being like a nice reference to like you know game jams and like indie devs, like indie online devs. Because like what was it like? I think Newgrounds wasn't Newgrounds went down this weekend or something like that. Oh really? Mm. Flash. Yeah, yeah. Flash. Flash, Flash is really... dead. So oh, Flash is dead. New... But I think Newgrounds has moved to like HTML five stuff recently yeah. but yeah it just flash. it just means that all this stuff that was originally programmed in <laughs> flash that was never ported or redone for html5 is never going to play unless you get like a special sandbox player or something I yeah think- i think they're they're working on some kind of a solution for it i saw like a blog post by tom from newgrounds or whatever mm-hmm. Uh, the Internet Archive has a has a um, a sandboxed um, player that has they they've archived a ton of of stuff. I don't know if, if any of the new ground stuff was included, um, but again, I just read a blog post about it. I didn't go and explore it right. because I was at work, and I just <laughs> that didn't seem like the right thing to do while I was working. Um, because if you did, because if I did, <laughs> they get you. Uh, but yeah, that track a, was yeah. hot. I, I loved that track. I was not expecting, like, I, I saw, like, a vocal version and an instrumental version, and I was hoping the vocal version wouldn't be, like, you know, I kind of, like, like this could have supported, like, a full-on rap track, you know? That would have been pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. but still, like, that right, is... There's an opportunity yeah. for all those nerdcore artists out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this game got to the point where it had enough people that would play it. I could easily see folks, like, lyricing over it. Like, 
But the funny thing about it is like it very much is reminiscent of like something like a Vocaloid track. Yeah. Which is why like I was I listened, I was like, oh, this, this clicks for me immediately. I'm down with this. So it was immediately it was an enjoyable track. And I watched some gameplay footage of it too. I only wish looking at it that it played more like a, like a Parappa game because mm. it looks like the flow is like a DDR arrow stream, but you're playing to like mostly the vocals and stuff. So I was like, man, it'd be nice if people were like, yeah, you know, do some Parappa line streams in there, even if you don't do the crazy mixing that you can do on a Parappa game, just to have that style of play. Just to have a little a little something that you can kind of freestyle with. I never I was I never liked the freestyle part of Parappa because I was just like. If I ever got to that point for the bonus points, it was just I was just hitting the button over and over and over and over again just for the points, and I felt well, kind I mean, of bad. If you don't, but how else are you going to chase the toilet? I mean, you have to. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do to chase the toilet. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I did a lot of baking um, this past week after Christmas um, into New Year's. I, I, I baked like maybe three loaves of bread, and every time Lots I was of... mixing up like the flour, I was like M I X the flour into the bowl. <laughs> Better that than the crack into the bowl. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Um, what was I going to say? I'll say that um, as far as games uh, released this year, um, I got nothing. Anyway. <laughs> what? <laughs> got, nothing. got nothing. No games released this year. No games were released this year. <laughs> I, I hope no games get released next year. No. Um, from a from a like music standpoint, the, this track really I can hear all of this person's inspiration. I must like a lot of people that do indie game jams are like on the younger side. I think it tends to, tends to be, and so the main two. Uh, sounds in this track that I hear is like Animal Crossing with like the vocal style. K.K. Slider. Yeah, exactly. K.K. Slider and all of his stuff. And also Game Boy Advance soundtracks. Specifically like Advance Wars. (laughs) Yeah. Because there's a very specific type of sampled soundtrack Hmm. that was from that era that was like really easy to do on Game Boy. And that breakdown towards the end of that track I was like, yo, this is... This is Andy's theme from Advance Wars. <laughs> Don't tease me like that, because Andy's theme was the best theme in that game. It was the so. best one, yeah. Let's have that kind I of was going to say it. Skate or Die as well. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just the yeah. beginning just kind of made me think of Skate or Die a little bit. Just, yeah, that, that whole vocal sample thing. Well, for um, <laughs> for this coming year, a game jam or a couple game jams is what I would like to get get involved in. I've been I've been putting together doing small projects for myself, but I've never actually like completed anything past a small mini game that I did for the Mad Gear Band. So I would like to like have small ideas completed by the end of the year that are not podcast related <laughs> and not just like a, a programming exercise. So. Um, I'm kind of looking Game forward games to are a too. great a great way to flex those uh, those muscles you've been exercising. Yeah, the programming muscles. Yeah, he's developed quite a bit over the last few years. Actually, last few months even. Yeah, I've been working really hard on like a top down bullet hell game. I want to make it feel like Doom, like the kind of run and gun style, but it's all in like uh, Virtual Boy colors, so it's just Ooh. very red. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not a great artist, so I'm gonna stick with it. But um, there's a lot of geometry involved. It's been a lot of fun. So, um, okay, Pernell, you got some picks. Let's hear them picks. I'm gonna pick. Well, since they're getting mixed up, I'm gonna pick one of mine first to get the route the tie into the earlier part of the show out of the way. All right. Um, so <clears throat> this track comes from the game Yuppie Psycho. I played it on the Switch. Um, the track title is Her. And it's composed by Michael Garrod Kelly.
Welcome back. I think. Yes. Yes. Do welcome back. <laughs> you are listening to her mm. from the game Yuppie Psycho, um, composed by Michael Garode Kenn. Um, I already typed it and moved it. Yeah, I had it right. Michael Garode Kelly. And I wasn't even reading it. I remembered that somehow. That's how good that is. Um, so the track itself is a little weird in the sense that it was not... I don't know, it was, a, it was structured in an intense way and not like a linear like a very linear track it kind of goes or jumps around a lot but mm -hmm. i think it does what it's supposed to do very well in the context of the game too and that's like the way it sounds but um i can describe you know like why i picked it for the year and also just by virtue of the fact of what the game was and why it apparently had me hooked for like not eight straight hours um but the idea behind this game is that you're a guy who lives kind of like in the country and he just got out of like say like early level college maybe high school i would say early college though okay and they kind of give you the impression that the world that these guys live in is like a classist society where like everyone's like kind of like classified by like letter based on like their level of like you know, prominence in society hmm. um but he ends up getting a letter to come work at this company called center court which as far as this environment is concerned is like a, a very successful corporation People break their necks to get jobs there. You know, <clears throat> people fight to get in. And for no reason whatsoever, he should have ever gotten a job to be hired to work at this company. Um, but it turns out that when he got hired, his reasoning for being hired was a very odd one. He was hired to find a witch that exists within the company and kill it. Um, he's actually <laughs> being hired to be a witch hunter. So the, it's a weird game in that the entire company is actually under the influence of a witch. Hmm. And it's a very messed up place. That sounds and really you, cool, man. And when you're in there, you can't leave. Like, you're stuck <laughs> inside the company. Like, if you're an employee, you can't get out. It's, a, it's such a strange concept. And what's, I'll admit... What's the gameplay like? Is it like is it like an RPG fighting type thing that you're into? No, or? it's a hard adventure game. Like, oh. there's no combat. Okay. Um, you can die. Like, there's actually a health bar and stuff, but it's hard adventure. Like, you're basically looking around. You're exploring the company, mm -hmm. trying to figure out who the witch is, how to kill her and where she is and uh as you're doing it the all the other idea is that no one can know what you are because the witch has influence all over the company so if she learns that you're a hunter she'll come after you so you gotta stay undercover exactly it's such a weird idea for a game it's like i said like there's areas like in the narrative like mostly towards the end where i was like oh this, this doesn't feel well explained or he dropped the ball mm -hmm. here or something but <laughs> in the end everything else was so cool and the way they themed it and such that i was so like you, I mean, like the idea is like, for example, like the HR department is just a bunch of women at the computers with giant mouths for heads, and they just spit acid. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! What? And like, there's like you come across a guy who's got his resume, and he wants to take it to human resources to get promoted to another position. And the head of human resources is just a giant mouth on the wall, a la Terror Vision, <laughs> okay. where it was a mouth on the TV. <laughs> And his app, his resume application in the um in the quota on is like I want you to chew me up and devour me or something oh like that. The guy's like that's a little bit on the nose, isn't it? He's like, well, I mean, will she hire me? Then I just want the job. <laughs> wow. It's just such a weird. Was it weird... scary? Did, like, were you scared of it? In any I way? won't. I won't lie to you. There, when you're running around until you get used to everything, there are definitely some scary bits because. Unlike a lot of horror games, this one does darkness almost to an insane degree. Like, right. uh, you get a flashlight, you get glow sticks, and a lantern to see your way around. And um, if you there's areas where if you don't have one of those things, it is pitch black. And even shining the flashlight, you're like, you can't see what's going on around you. Like, to give you an example, and this isn't really a spoiler so much, it's just like a cool thing, because I knew something like this before going in, too. Um, there's a couple bosses in the game. And one particularly cool one that I liked was one that's called Dot Matrix. Mm. Um, you walk into his like his layers per se, and it is literally a Cronenberg like old, old school office printer, and it's <laughs> pretty much running around trying to find you. It can't see you; it can only hear you. And um, the character you get a clue from a character in the game where it's like, if you if you come across Dot Matrix, don't run from it. It can feel the vibrations in the floor and come after oh you. Oh my god. Um, and what happens if it comes, it's like basically like four giant hands that it uses to walk around on the floor. And if it grabs you, it will hold you up and like take out, you know, the old dot matrix pointer for when it just like scans out images. And it starts pecking your head until it pops. 
Oh, so God. The only way you can get away from it is you have to feed it an ink cartridge because it loves ink cartridges. And it'll start going nuts for it and it'll throw you away while it takes at it. And you're like basically trying to get away from it because you can't kill it because you don't fight. You have to figure out how to escape from it. Um, but it's just... It had me in a way where I was like, I wanted to know this. I wanted to figure out who the witch was, and I wanted to see more of this ridiculous company because it's just so b absurd. Everything about the game is absurd, and they they do a good balance of like horror mm -hmm. and humor in that regard too. But you have to go into it with a genuine suspicion of disbelief because you can be at one guy's like, how does no one on the outside ever think to come into the company and figure things out, or? And of course, they do kind of have a moment like that where something like that may come up. But Pete, you can you can pick this game apart easily if you really wanted to. But there's it's, no point. You just experience it for what it is. Well, that sounds but, crazy. Did this come out last year? Um, I want to say it came out last year, like early last year. Mm -hmm. But it came out on the Switch in October. Okay. And yeah. that's what I got. Wow. All right. Well, here we go. On the other side of things, we're gonna hear some oh, uplifting I music. I Oh, I, I forgot. But I, he got I didn't mention else. the. Yeah, it was the last part. The reason why. It's oh, the theme of I the thought episode. you just like the hunt witches, and like that's what you wanted to do for 2021. Oh, that's a secret. Because <laughs> if anyone, because if the witches know, I'm already if they found out. Screwed, aren't I? Um, but like the idea behind it is that you know work is the whole idea behind the game is like it's like a sort of a metaphor for like work is hell, mm -hmm. and the idea that people genuinely want to you know move up the ladder. They want to get a job they feel comfortable with and content with or whatever. Um, and I guess as far as 2020 goes, like I was able to get off contract work for the first time in like five years, which felt nice. Um, so to me, that was a, a positive up for the year 2020 was I was, able to, I was able to get a new job in a time where if anything, getting a new job is much harder than yeah. it would have been otherwise. So, but is work still hell? Oh, of course. <laughs> of you can course. always count on that. You can always count on that. No Cronenberg printers, but it's just as bad. <laughs> just as bad. <laughs> Comparable to Cronenberg printers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will say... They pinch um, you and they suck your blood and use that as ink. I mean, it's just <laughs> how all printers work, unfortunately. They just really, really... <laughs> I want you yeah. to know that. <laughs> just really so slowly. The bzzz, Maybe that's where the blood I donated went today. They actually bought it and they're going to use it in toner. <laughs> uh, Pernell, we're, out of, we're, out, we're out of red. Lobbying. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Pernell just gave blood today, right before the show. Double red. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Double so, red. Someone, someone's printing out their uh, their college thesis using Pernell. <laughs> Grade P. <laughs> Grade P. All right, so we're going to listen to some music that is on the completely different end of things. This is music to get you ready for the new year. This is music to like get you pumped for the new year and a soundtrack I just rediscovered again. This is from the game Boxing Legends of the Ring for the Super Nintendo, composed by Mark Gannis and Dean Morrell. This is the training song, and it is, um, it's trying so hard to be the Rocky theme, but it's not. It's just <laughs> it's, it's really fun. Um, and when we come back, uh, we will have uh, this week's special quiz show um, where everyone can get involved, including you. All right. Anyway, this is the training music from Boxing Legends of the Ring for the Super Nintendo.
Uh, we're back. You have been listening to uh, the training music from the game Boxing Legends of the Ring for the Super Nintendo, composed by Mark Gannis and Dean Morrell. Um, and we were just talking about boxing games um, that we have played in the past. Uh, and Austin was uh, was not just describing, but performing how to how to play uh, the boxing game for the Wii. Uh, Wii, yeah, Sports. Wii Sports boxing, but um, but the the only boxing game I ever really got into. No, aside from Ready to Rumble for, for the Dreamcast was for the Sega Genesis. It was uh, Evander Holyfield Real Deal Boxing in which you can um, you can you can pick different boxers from different eras um, up from history and they can like kind of or you can make your own character and there's like a whole <laughs> training mode. It was it was really cool. Uh, if you knew if you knew anything about boxing, of course, I was 16, 15. I didn't know anything about boxing. I, I still don't. I grew up Julius in a Caesar very sports focused household, and I never got into sports. So you were still the demographic, <laughs> probably. <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was a, there was like a, a number girl who came by with the uh, the sign, and so that was probably all I had going for me. Um, <laughs> in your house? <laughs> no, <Yeah>. <laughs> mom. <laughs> Free number girl. Oh god. <laughs> uh, all right, so. Um, now it's time of the show where we are going to get into um, something that I like to do and that everyone hates. It's a special quiz that I wrote for Purnell, and we're going to have. Um, I don't, we we're not going to have buzzers, but we we can um, <laughs> we can uh, have a consensus on an answer. Um, it's a very uh, silly contest that we're going to do here, and uh, the winner will receive not much of anything at all. Yes, not even a <laughs> coke for that. Yeah, incentive. How about a Coke, man? I will buy you all a Coke. Okay, there the, it is. Here we go. The game I'll is. I'll send you my Venmo information shortly. And uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, this game is all about uh, transportation. Um, what are you? Uh, what are these characters riding? What do these video game characters <clears throat> normally ride? <clears throat> and that's it. Uh, the train. I was trying to find. No, 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 the car. They drive. They did a carpool. I was trying to find a um a, a clip from uh the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe movie where Aslan goes ride me, but when you search <laughs> when when you search for that on um on a Google image search, like you get all sorts. You're of not going to get what you want. <laughs> safe search. Yeah, safe. Yeah, do safe search. All right. So, is this a mode of transportation? We're going to start with the first one. Um, Link from the Legend of Zelda. What does he like to ride? I wish it was a spinner, but that's not the <laughs> right answer. But it's truly the right answer. So instead, go. We, well, we all know this one. So it's time to give away yeah. here. It's his the shield. Of the horse. It's the horse. Yeah. Oh, God, see, I, see, everyone has better answers than the right one. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you get bonus points if um if it's a better answer than pronounced. All right. Uh, hey, no, 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 no. The spinner is the best answer. You take that bet. All right. Our next <laughs> question is Lakitu. Lakitu from Super Mario Brothers. He, he rides, rides a cloud. He cloud. rides a pony. It's a cloud pony. <laughs> he rides the horse, actually. <laughs> Link is in the cloud. There it is. See? He unlocks that. <clears throat> now, a I, smiling cloud. Now, how, how tall is Lakitu? Because you never see his feet behind the cloud. I like to think that he's got real long, sexy legs. I always assumed he was sitting cross-legged. <laughs> Yeah, that would make what, sense. But the, I, the cloud is like a Mary Poppins kind of gimmick, where just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah his, just like, his legs are three times taller than he is <laughs> than the upper part of his body. They're just like in this infinite cloud. All right, next. Oh, there's an interesting one. Buttspo says he also rides lily pads. I've never seen that, oh. but I could totally picture it too. I will accept you know that because that I don't on? play a lot of video games, and so I don't know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. Uh, what about Cloud from Final Fantasy VII? What does he like he to ride? Motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> Schmokabos. Uh, I will but also accept chocobo or a, a, a motorized chocobo. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's many other. Oh, snowboards. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there we go. The cloud 1080 snowboarding. Did he ride anything That's in right. air, guys, or was he just running around on his feet? No, he just stabbed people. He just stabbed people. Good old cloud. <laughs> Always stabbing people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up is Sid from Final Fantasy. Oh. He, he, wrote, he wrote adrenaline. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. that, that Joker, yeah. he blew himself up, jumped out of an airship. <laughs> he, he, was, he, was, he was high on life. 
<laughs> I was gonna say, he, he wrote delusions of grandeur. <laughs> Just to make sure, because I see Bunchbo makes an interesting point here. I think we're all talking about different sins, <laughs> and I'm cool with that. Yeah, I mean, well, a lot of sins. Yeah, we're just gonna say airship. I, don't, I was looking I don't, for airship. Someone, that's okay. I was gonna say airship as someone who has barely played any Final Fantasy. I was like, I think he's the guy that makes the ships. Because he I know actually him from does. Kingdom like Hearts. in in seven yeah. and in four, he actually was an airship engineer. Oh, in ten, he was the captain. That's the only one I played. So, right. Huh. So now I want to check them all. Maybe he was. Maybe he was related to airships and almost. No, no. Because in uh eight, he was like the headmaster or something. But oh, right. Um, but he had a minor. Yeah, he had a minor in in airshipery. <laughs> airshipery. Airship design. Oh my god! All right, coming up next what, like is Gary? Miles Tail Prower from Sonic the Hedgehog. He rides the wind. That is biplane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the it's wind, not that yeah. funny that he has a plane, but he can also fly. But I also get he's like I get tired of flying sometimes. Yeah, I just put, yeah, I just like, put planes. So I know he's like an all. Why sorts do you of, have like, a car if you can walk? <laughs> I mean, that's the same kind of thing. <laughs> He's got like all sorts of like mechs and stuff, like in um in like the, the adventure oh, yeah, games. Right. But we don't acknowledge that on this show. What's that? <laughs> I always joked about that with like Sonic. Like I guess with Tails, I mean, like, in the game they show he clearly gets tired from flying at a certain point in time. Yeah. Sonic doesn't get yeah. tired, which means he can just run <laughs> indefinitely. But like he gets a car solely just to give other people a chance on a foot race. <laughs> right. His cart. His cart racing. And then Sonic R comes along and just ruins everything because that game doesn't even make sense to exist. No. <laughs> all right. It doesn't, doesn't make any enough sense anything. to exist. I like that. Uh, all right. This is uh, Mario from Super Mario Brothers. What doesn't Mario ride? But I guess he does ride Yoshi the most often. Yeah. Oh, Yoshi. Yeah. Koopa Shells. That's no, he rides Yoshi. <laughs> He does Everybody ride Koopa shells. He though. rides that one camera-looking thing in, in Mario Two, where you have to hop <laughs> on it to go across the spikes. That's right. That's his yeah. primary mode of transportation. And, the, and those little birds. All right. Um, and the birds. Uh, Mega Man for Mega Man. His dog. <laughs> his yeah, dog. Like the only, Get on over like here, doggy. <laughs> Yeah, Rush is the best though. Yeah. I still wish. I think there's more they could have done with Rush over the franchise. They're like, yeah, Rush. The, it's Coil and Jet. Yeah, Coil and Jet's good. I, <laughs> didn't he have a submarine once? No one talked. About I didn't play the newest one. Was it eleven or was it twelve? What's, what's the newest one called? It was eleven. Mighty well, number nine. Mighty number no, nine. we don't. No. <laughs> well, and no, that game was better than people gave it credit, but it was no freaking Mega Man. That's was was there a Rush or Rush-like creature in either of those games? <coughs> eleven still had Rush. Oh, good. Good, yeah, he still was a coil and a jet. That's <laughs> all boy. he had. All right. Um, so is he a like a? He's not a golden retriever. Um, he's a dog. He's a sprocket. We need to know his. his we need to know That's his breed. He's a sprocket. Species. Yeah, we're looking he's for the species sprocket. for now. That's the species sprocket. <laughs> sprocket. He's a French sprocket. All right. Next up is <laughs> all four of the turtles from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, they have the, the sewer scooters. Rated I can't G. Remember what the... um, let me think. Uh, let me think here. <laughs> or I guess if it's all four, then they all have to fit on it, right? The turtle van. And the turtle blimp. Yeah. And surfboards. Because that makes sense. And uh, I was actually looking for skate. surfboards. <laughs> surfboards oh. <laughs> and also, if you look at their toys, they had like how many freaking vehicles? <laughs> so you're right. I was, I was also thinking the van. I was just thinking of putting like a big, like, like a big scary like van. <laughs> like a big unmarked Scary van. white van. It says turtles live here. <laughs> uh, oh boy! All right. So next up, we have Bayou Billy from the Adventures of Bayou Billy. Bayou Billy. He rides oh. gators in a jeep. Pernell, you would know your games too well. He does ride a jeep. There's a whole stage where you just ride in a jeep. That's right. Yeah, these and are. He dry, he, and he, he's a masterful pilot of the Jeep, too, let me tell you. A, I can't even make it past the <laughs> second enemy in that game. So I have no idea. I think the only people who could beat Jeep this game skate. are speedrunners. There it is. <laughs> That's the so. one I was forgetting. The party wagon, the turtle van. That's what it was. The party wagon. Yeah, but the, the Cheapskate was like one of the one of the toy based ones that they had. Because it was on the show, but it was like a one time. It's like, we got the Cheapskate. <laughs> it's like, yeah, use it. And then they forget to use it because the fan is just convenient for them to bring out on the show. All right, up but, next is Lemmy Koopa from Super Mario Brothers 3. Lemmy of the Koopa Kids. He rides Lemmy. a ball. He rides balls. Oh, that's right. oh. It's all on the balls. <laughs> that's 
right. Ball man. I was getting, I was getting to say, like, wait, did he that ever fly one. his dad's copter before? But, like, nah. Right, I was imagining him in a very tiny, like, Koopa mobile. Um, <laughs> he might have been later on, but... The Koopa um, Koop! I haven't known a Nintendo system since the um, NES. So. All right. How does that not wait. exist? There's a Koopa Koop makes sense and it should exist in the mario verse so i guess maybe that's what bowser drove in mario 3d world all right now we're getting to some worse ones here um worse than that these are terrible questions uh ryu hayabusa from ninja gaiden he rises oh hayabusa what he never wrote anything ryu hayabusa all right yeah right think think back yeah (laughs) ryu hayabusa the ninja he ran he ran some more Every yeah, every game he was on some kind of moving object, but he didn't ride it. He just kind of ran on. I'll it. I'll tell you this ran right now: it. Austin got it right first try. I put down trains. <laughs> Are you serious? He doesn't ride oh. the trains. He jumps on the train and runs along them. Yeah, he's he running along the train. Right. He's still ever. going somewhere. He's still he's going, going somewhere. On the train. Yeah, he's on. He never sits on that train. He doesn't. He never <laughs> asked for service. Look, he didn't buy a ticket. <laughs> no no cab service. He's uh, like, Mister Hayabusa, where are you going? Where the wind takes me. I like a mocha latte, please. <laughs> oh, I like Buttsbo's answer. He just damage boosts three enemies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Dash. It's a. Uh, it's actually some trivia here that Ryu Hayabusa is really scared of flying, so he takes trains everywhere. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Discoveries. Yeah, Actually, I can't be because like the last level of the third game, he's on a freaking airship. Oh, and he's terrified. <laughs> he's terrified the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's swelling himself the whole time. Yep. <laughs> All right, uh, the next one is Bill and Lance from Super Contra. Missiles. <laughs> and <laughs> no, Mecha Birds. Super C. Super C. Oh, I've never played Super, Super C. C, so in your face. I've never played Super C. That's the best. I never played Super How C. How is that in ever. his face? That's my best. That's, that's, that's <laughs> the best C, man. <laughs> the question Maybe you've a- asked me, I don't know the answer to. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a helicopter? Yeah, I was looking for the helicopter. Because they, they all they all come off the helicopter at the bit. The, the right, I should have just thought of like what's the typical commando and predator. Yeah, thing that's literally what I did. <laughs> I'm like, I know they've done helicopters in a number of the games, but the missile, the yeah. missile is uniquely contra. Yeah, that was that was the the Genesis one, right? The hardcore contra hardcore. You're bouncing from missile Hard, to missile. No. They did it in hardcore. They did it in uh, the one on the PS2 Shattered Soldier. Mm. They did it again. In some capacity, on Hardcore Uprising. Too. I like that. I like to think that's how they get, like to get around normally. You know, it's like okay, we gotta get to the ball, shoot a missile. <laughs> just jump it's on just the- an odd <laughs> concept. Like, you know that thing's gonna explode on impact, right? Like we'll figure it out when we get there. Just get on. We'll fix it in post. All right, um, that's it. That's all I got. Thank you for playing. Um, my yeah, yeah, excellent. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Good job. <laughs> we did it. Who won? Uh, Austin did. Cornell actually. won. I think. No. We all won. Congrats to me. <laughs> okay. And, I mean us. <laughs> oh, we should, we should answer the question, too. There was also a question submitted oh, yeah. in the chat. Okay. By Bed Roth, up top, down low, too slow. Read the question. I'll find it. Here it is. No, I don't have a question, so you better read no, it. I got it. He <laughs> says, in gaming or otherwise, what is one thing that you actually enjoyed about 2020? and something you're looking forward to in 2021. Fun fact, I asked him, do you mean gaming or otherwise? And he says it in his friggin' question, what is wrong with me? Oh yeah, all the blood loss. Rob can go first. Okay, I, I wasn't listening. So gaming or not otherwise? <laughs> either. Either, okay, either, 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 either. Um, I would say that um, uh, one of the best things about 2020 was um, uh, a culture shift in the office allowing people to work from home if they're able to. Uh, for people who are able to, there's, there's a, a lot of places that were, uh, that just didn't, never allowed it before suddenly shifted, and I hope it continues forever. Um, <laughs> but it does make things difficult. So I hope I hope more of that uh, this coming year. Uh, what else? Um, I, feel, I feel like um, um, last year I spent a lot more time um, cooking, and I really enjoyed doing that. And, you know, Purnell knows I cook a lot, but I, I really explored that a lot more. Um, and I hope to see that more uh, next year. It's, it's, been, it's been really good. And as far as gaming goes, like I said, I just started Persona, and so my whole year is set. I can just play that forever. <laughs> um, and then there's Persona Royal. I could do that. And I don't You're know. You're going to play I, Royal after the main one? Oh, hell no. No. <laughs> I'm about to say, are you deaf, man? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I, at the end of at the end of 2020, I also kind of rediscovered um, getting back into creating music again, and 
and um, DJing, and I really how much I really enjoyed doing that. I just I kind of got out of that because I went back into playing DDR so hardcore. So I, I hope to be a lot more creative this coming year. Uh, what about you, Pranel? So mine is a little weird. Um, I guess 2020, the things that I I guess I can smile the most about was I got that nice exposure to collaborative gaming. It's a very rare thing in my life these days, which I love. And Well, I don't love that aspect. I love when I can do it. Um, but I was able to do that with the La Mulana run. And even after I was done playing it alongside... Uh, Kung Fu Carlito, I was able to still continue that in spirit with other people who started picking the game up and were like, I'm stuck on this puzzle. Well, let's see where you're at. Hit me with some dialogue. Where are you at? You know, we have that back and forth. It's um, often unutilized aspect of gaming that I appreciate and I wish more of existed in my day to day. Um, but I think that was like a big thing about video games <coughs> in 2020 that I loved. As far as non video games in 2020, um, I would say that, honestly, even though it wasn't as on the level I wish it were, because I did gain back some weight, and today's Do You Remember on Facebook did a good job of proving that, um, I still was able to maintain some semblance of like better health despite being locked out of all the stuff I was doing <laughs> to get the weight off in the first place, thanks to COVID garbage. Um, so I'm thankful that I was able to kind of run with that despite the challenges there. As far as 2021, things to look forward to, I don't have anything gaming related yet because, quite frankly, I'm just kind of floating about in the gamerverse. So I'm just going to play what I can get around to playing. Hopefully some cool stuff comes along, and if it does, hopefully I have time to play it. Non-gaming, honestly, I'm just hoping to find myself because I am very lost. But I'm hoping that throughout the course of this year, I make some strides and picking up the pieces and charting a course for myself. So, ride in the wave and see where I go. Um, well, I'm here for you, you know. Like, um, if you ever need um, some support or some direction or someone to yell at you to say, this is who you are, I'll, I'll, I'll be that guy. <laughs> well, only if the yelling comes with Coke. Yeah. No, Dr. Pep. Dr. Pepper. No, Pepper. Dr. Coke. Dr. Coke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, like, that's cracking me up more than anything else, right? Dr. Coke. <laughs> <laughs> you got big time to retire. I was like, are you telling me I'm not qualified enough to be in a soda biz? I'm sorry, Mr. Cola. All right, we got some Try more to music take. to get into. So let's get into our, our final um, our final picks. So most of these are coming from our listeners, right, Pernell? Yes. yes. And in fact, my next one is going to be a listener submission. It came from one Christopher Shenstrom. And the title of the track is The Jib Jig. God, I just love that Jib Jig. Jibber Jabber Jib Jig. From the game Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest, composed by David Wise. back you're listening to jib jig from donkey kong country 2 diddy's conquest composed by david wise but restored by Jamin sam miller and honestly 
you could hear the remaster and that that was oh. a really good that sounds very awesome. well done so Christopher Shinstrom has some cool words to say for the show in regards to this and he says first of all it's extra fun to have a live stream on one's birthday with you guys so I sure hope I can be there live I don't think Happy he can make birthday. it but it's totally cool that he tried um but yeah this year has been special just like the stage where you can hear this requested track the game it comes from is just a darn mad, amazing platformer game. It's fun and filled with action. When it comes to this pirate level, it's just so much going on and you're stressed to hell by rising water levels that pushes the limits. Personally, I was so focused on completing this level that I totally did not hear the music on initial runs, but listening to it afterwards is actually one of my favorites from the game next to Sticker Bush Symphony, of course. Thanks for another amazing year, Robin Purnell. Keep being awesome. Oh, thanks. Aww. Yeah, I appreciate that. We, we we try real hard. We, we we put a lot of we put a lot of time into this thing, um, and uh, it's always nice to, to to hear that from everybody. I agree. Like it seems it's odd to say, and a lot of people probably don't. It probably doesn't click for a number of folks in that why why it would matter. But there's something nice to be said about just like hearing from people that hear listen to the show, even if it's just like a generic statement where it's like, "Hey, cool," and then they just walk <laughs> away. And it's like, I'm honestly. Still, like it's a wonderful feeling to be like someone noted that you're doing something that they like, and they just say this is cool, keep doing it, or it's good, but maybe with more wizards. In which case, Austin can handle that. <laughs> yeah, one. Austin's got um, that one. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, it's just nice to have get some kind of feedback and be, be talking to people. Also, it's just nice to talk to people even outside of, which is why we do like the different groups here and there. Um, it's just nice. So yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, uh, this Discord's kind of kind of like brought me back into um, you know making friends on the internet when I've sort of been avoiding people on, in in the world in general for a very long time. Um, so it's nice to know that like I've got acquaintances and people that I do call genuine friends, even though uh, we've never met in person, and especially not this past year. But I'm hoping hoping the end of this year and maybe the beginning of um, 2022, uh, being able to make some trips out to to meet some people. I'm um, looking at Michael Bridgewater over in the UK. Definitely want to go meet him. That and, would uh, be a nice trip. And uh, and and Boston's not too far. I would like I would love to see Chell. Um, you know she's real cool, and I love her music. So it'd be really nice to, to meet her. Um, the funny part, my first thought was like combine it with Pax, and I was like, but now I remember what Pax was like in Boston. I was like, maybe not Pax. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> it seems like it's a good cool. idea to combine things with enormous conventions, but I don't know. Not with that one, though. That <laughs> takes a lot out of you. Jeez, Pax, Pax Boston was just... It started it's out huge. being... As you think about it, I don't think Pax Boston was ever good. Like, <laughs> like Pax Hot Pride take, was geez. great at one point. Well, it's not a mean take. It's a genuine statement of, it's too crowded. It's just, when game cons became popular enough that they could pack rooms like they do, a lot of what made them good in the first place just kind of went up in smoke with them. It's not a it's not a smack on the actual shows mm. so much on it's just what became of the hobby. It got really big, but in becoming so big, it lost the intimacy that it originally yeah. had. So, so there was the PAX Unplugged in Philadelphia last year and the year before that, which was just board gaming, and you would think that that wouldn't be as uh, big of a scale, but it was pretty enormous. But PAX Unplugged works differently in a way that that was cool because. It's hard to explain. As you know, it's really not. Um, so when you think about <laughs> video games you can get that and together. what it takes to get a video game going, you need electricity, you need a TV, you need the system, multiple controllers that can accommodate the system, then a place for all the people to play and sit. So you have to fill a room with these things. You can only have so many running through a room at one time. But then you have like thousands upon thousands of people coming to the show that want to engage in the exact same stuff. Many people are getting left out in the cold or waiting in long lines to try stuff. Meanwhile, PAX Unplugged is a board game. So what that totally is, is all you need is a table and some chairs and then the games. And the games can be brought by the people coming to the show proper. They can be purchased on the show floor. They can be rented on the show floor. It's so much easier to get that many people entertained using the resources. Mm -hmm than it is to do that with a video game convention. It just is. Like, mm -hmm. And I've seen it because PAX Unplugged is huge. But you never find yourself stuck and wishing you weren't waiting in line for hours unless you're trying to get to a panel or something. But if you just want to play games, you can do that whenever you want, literally. I've never had an issue finding a table and sitting down and using it. 
And Philly's nice and close for us, too, so you can't beat that. Oh, the parking still sucks, <laughs> oh, yeah. but... Still Philly. How many, but... um, how many years have they been doing PAX Unplugged? It's, it's only been a few, right? It's either two or three. Okay. Um, I want to say two, but I think I've gone it, every yeah. year they start since they started it, mm-hmm. and it's been great every year. It's gotten bigger and bigger as far mm-hmm. as like the space they use mm-hmm. and people who are attending it, but they still manage it well throughout the entire time. It's just been smart. Now, board, board gaming probably took a big hit in 2020. I mean, like, I would assume probably because a lot of people are inside, they're playing with their families, but, like, <clears> a lot of board gaming is getting friends together and getting in bigger groups of people that you don't know and, and playing. And yeah. a lot of that, not, not a lot of that was happening this year, so um, that was really, yeah, it really hurts. Sad. Like, my, yeah. on the positive, though, a slight positive that is, it got me to look at what I was buying in, video, in board games more because... <laughs> going to say the same thing. I look at what I have in that room. Like, it's amazing how, like, I have a neighbor who just bought a house. And um, so our houses are almost the exact same layout. It's just inverted. And uh, we were communicating. I was like, so what did you, I was like, so what did you do with your room? And, you know, you moved in, and we were collaborating on the fact that it's her first house. So I could be like, hey, so how's it feel to get your first house and all these space, all this space? What are you doing with it? And she was like, I made this room a guest room for, like, when my cousins come over, my niece and nephew come over. I made this room a bedroom, and this room is my office. They're like, oh, and for me, like, this room's full of cardboard. Literally. <laughs> she's like, what about you? I'm like, well, I have the board game room for all the board game babies, and then I have uh, the office, but it's really just the retro game library, and there's a desk in it. And <laughs> then I have my bedroom, which I actually gave myself the smaller of the rooms of the two because I want the library to be bigger. <laughs> it's like, I can call I it just the, wanted- the board game babies. That's pretty good. Like, well, they're, they're my baby. But now, of course, with COVID and not being able to get games going like I was doing before, I have a lot of games that are sitting there. And I'm like, am I going to play these again? If I do, when? And if that does come up, will I want to get newer games by that point? What does yeah, the man yeah. do? <laughs> so I, I walk in, I'll stare at them sometimes, and I'm like, I should play that. I should play that. I've even tried to do solo sometimes, but then I'm like, I can do a solo board game, or I can play a solo video game. <laughs> I think solo <laughs> video game works better for me. Um, so it becomes a challenge to decide what I want to do with my stuff, because fun fact, I have like 500 board games. Um, which is why it was a lot easier for me to put the kibosh on getting more. I was like, I'm done. If I don't sell something, I'm not replacing it with something new. You know, I'm not getting a new Christmas game. 2021, you've got 500 friends. They can all yep. get the new <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy J, here, he, he, you got um, Trash Pandas, but well, he got Zaya. Well, he's a cooler friend, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah, it's, it's funny to be like, sit there and be like, this is what I do with all that space. It's just board games. <laughs> it's a room full of board games. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, moving on to our final tracks, we're going to listen to, I'm going to listen, I picked music from the game Dead or Alive 2. Um, I was trying to think mm-hmm. of fighting games that had a really good counter attack system. And Dead or Alive, is, it came right up, because I think that's just one of the coolest parts of this 3D game franchise, is just being able to counter-attack any of the, the physical moves, and it always looks really cool. So this is the track, uh, Hidohira, reminiscent of Ketsui no Toki, the theme of Kasumi, from Dead or Alive 2. This is from the Dreamcast, composed by Makoto Hosoi.
we're back. And we're back. Hello. Uh, <laughs> you're listening to Hito Heart, Hito Hira, reminiscent of Ketsui no Toki, theme of Kasumi from Dead or Alive 2 for the Dreamcast, composed by Makoto Hosoi. Um, again, going through a whole other podcast where I play some fighting game music. Um, I love fighting games so much. <laughs> um, I did play. And I love uh, losing at them. <laughs> yeah, I did play a lot of Dead or Alive. I think that was like, the only 3D one I really got into. I never never broke into Tekken or Virtua Fighter, but I always enjoy or um, really Soul Calibur. But I always enjoy watching those like, when there's competitions and stuff online. But um, Dead or Alive 2 uh, back in the day was one I put a lot of hours into to try to get better at. Um, it just felt very <laughs> fluid, you know. Did you guys end up doing any like? games of this caliber or fighting game styles back in the day or even presently yeah you guys fighting game players fgc <laughs> not really i mean i did the the street fighter 2 back in the day just like nice. everybody else yeah um never really got heavily into it or competitive or anything like that but um yeah i don't I'm know really... there's also a lot of really cheap knockoff <clears throat> street fighter style games from that era and uh <laughs> And I think the oversaturation just kind of spoiled the genre. Yeah. The genre for me a little bit. I never really had the opportunity to play, like, the the golden age of fighting games from that era, like Street Fighter 2 and all that. I played it, but I didn't. I wasn't really old enough. I, uh, when I was older, I played, like, Soul Calibur 2 on, on Xbox a bunch. <coughs> and that was a lot of fun. Yeah, sometimes that depends on, like, on the group that you're playing with. Um, yeah. It was oh, and like, Mortal Kombat. We yeah. did play a lot of Mortal Kombat, like right, yeah. eight or whatever it was. I don't know. You played too many pros that they kind of sap the joy out of you. Just like yeah. out of the rings. Like this isn't even a contest. Where's the competition? I'm trying to be one. Please let mm-hmm. me in. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see um, how online competition this past year has really like like the, the entire Capcom Cup for Street Fighter is all online now. Um, I think Evo, I don't think Evo's happening again. Um, similar things are happening with Evo, which is the biggest mm-hmm. fighting game tournament in Las Vegas in the, in the, in the world. Um, mm-hmm. Similar things are happening there that are happening with MAGFest. So um, oh. just not great management. So that's that's not good. So, um, But that, that's unfortunate. There's things are things growing so so large that... Um, that we can have these problems, so I'm, I'm looking Bubble forward. Bubble is bursting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to yeah, smaller, man. smaller, uh, smaller groups. So like local scenes it's are it's always smaller. awesome. Local Philly scenes. Smaller groups means possibly wackier games making the cut. That's where Purnell's mm-hmm. are liking. Yeah. Wacky fighters. <laughs> wacky, wa- wacky fighters. Wacky. Give me that Waku Waku Seven tournament, please. <laughs> but when I think of this era, especially on the Dreamcast, is when I really got into Bullet Hell and shoot 'em up games. And so that's like one of my things for this year. Is I want to look. I've been streaming um, DDR, and so now I want to start branching out and start streaming um, shoot 'em ups and like trying to get. See, I think you really get a good, good audience with that because I, I think so. I've been I've been trying so hard to crack the code of what do people want in these things. I do think you playing bullet hell at the caliber caliber bring that back full circle. <laughs> um, that you do yeah. would be a good draw for folks. I'm not good. I just play them. I play them, but I'm not good at any of them. <laughs> Did you like one credit clear Giga Wing 2? Yeah, one time. One time when I had like my 17-year-old <laughs> reflexes uh, playing that they game. They don't go away. Oh. That's a big lie. They don't go away. <laughs> oh. I, I, look, if I'm, not ma- if, not, if I'm not rolling in the Twitch dollars because they, no one wants to see like a, a sweaty 40-year-old man playing Dance Dance, um, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't know, I, I don't want what they want. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it with Robbie Reby actually a few weeks ago, thinking like I don't know like it's it's against the kind of game where it's like I think people would like the it's idea like, of looking at it, but you play so many you play people. so many interesting games. I think you could do one a week, just do like some random like like title once a week, and just like see how far you can get with it. Play Yuppie Psycho. <laughs> yeah, watch out for the puking employees. <laughs> it's just like, oh my god. All right, oh, now, what's your final track? Well, this one is also semi-relevant to me in an odd way, but I'm bringing it full round, round back for it because I just want to play this track on the show. Um, it's from the game Yakuza Like a Dragon, and it's the sub-story battle theme. I don't know who specifically composed it, but I have Hidenori Shoji, Yuri Fukuda, Shihiro Aoki, and Saori Yoshida as potential hits 
and wonders. Yeah, it's always disappointing when you have like a list of composers and you try to find the original soundtrack or something online and, and it's not broken out of who worked on what. Because it's a matter of like, it's like, what about this track? Did you like it? Not really. That oh, we don't know who did it. That was somebody um, else. That was somebody it could else. Be anybody? Could be anybody? <laughs> he what came about in this? for the day. Like yeah, that was mine. <laughs> I did that one. That was my track. <laughs> my track. Welcome back. You're listening to the sub-story battle theme from the game Yakuza Like a Dragon, composed by Hidenori Shoji, Yori Fukuda, Chihiro Aoki, and Saori Yoshida. So, you'll probably be hearing a lot more of the OST throughout the next year or so, because this game is not only my game of 2020, but also the OST from it came out of left field and shocked the crap out of me. It's... There isn't a bad track amongst the entire roster, and there's a lot of tracks on this thing. Um, I've even heard people make comments that said that this is like, uh, like a reference to like Dragon Quest games, which I believe because the main character himself is obsessed with Dragon Quest games. Oh, really? So, <laughs> for this to be influenced by Dragon Quest music is a logical jump to make. Um, but this plays not enough. It plays during certain battles. The first time it plays when you're fighting against a flasher on the street which is hilarious in and of itself in that regard but um then it comes up every once in the blue moon for like particularly special battles um so yakuza like a dragon is a fantastic not brawler it's an rpg mm-hmm. but it still carries all the yakuza traits like mini game mania and serious narratives with silly side stories 
It has a crafting system. It has a Mario Kart like go kart game. Ooh. It's got and the thing about it is like it's Sega developed it. So to be perfectly honest, when I first played that mini kart game, my first thought was like, this could have been like someone's like, okay, we designed Sonic and Sega All Star Racing. Let's just throw that in Yakuza. Just toss it in there. <laughs> I was I was, listening, kind of, I was listening to another podcast and they said that Sega doesn't make games anymore. They just make Yakuza and every other game goes into Yakuza. <laughs> I can honestly believe that because they have everything. They have a karaoke yeah. game in there. They have a go kart game. They have this weird mini game. You're collecting recyclable cans for a homeless um, homeless um, community. Um, Shoji or Shogi. They have a bunch of like other random like underground like casino games or gambling games. Koi. Wow. It's just there's tons of random bric-a-brac to do in this game. It's insane. And then the so, worst part about it is that I want to see the story play out, but there's these mini so games. Yeah, all like I don't want, do. I don't have time to help this little girl sell cookies. <laughs> Yakuza is moving in. Is it <laughs> like how? Alliance. Is it like how Grand Theft Auto has a bunch of extra tiny side games to play? Is, I've never not, played a Yakuza game. Not a hundred percent, because like in Grand Theft Auto, you can just be walking down the street and see an ambulance, and I'm gonna steal the ambulance, and boom, mini game. Um, Yakuza, they're parsed out in areas like you can't just like stop anywhere you want and start playing, you know, you know, Shoji or Shogi. But there's a guy on the street in a spot who's playing it, and you can sit down and play with him. There's Mahjong bars. You can go to the bar and play it there. The go kart track is a location you go to, and you can do the go kart game there. Um, same with all the other mini games. Um, in fact, thinking about it hard, I don't think there's a single mini game in the game that you can just do whenever you want. You always have to go to an actual place to do it. I think um, Grand Theft Auto thing. still does the thing like that. Like, you have to go to the bowling alley to go bowling. But... Hey, oh, no, yeah, Nico, like let's too. go bowling. Nico. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but the thing about, like, GTA, in addition, that they also have a lot of subway, in all honesty, you can just kind of pick it up wherever, just as long as there's a car that works with it. Like, That's the paramedics, true. you can literally just, like, you can take a car, hit someone with it, and then steal the paramedics car when they come to pick them right, up. And they <laughs> like, okay, mini game. Take the, take the same person you hit to the hospital. They get points for it. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, Yakuza is very structured like that. And also the side stories, I guess they're about on par in the same regard because like you have to go to certain areas at certain points in the game, but they at least tell you where they are, and you can initiate a side story narrative and engage in that. Um, but before I forget, I want to mention the reason why I picked this track for the whole best of 2020 bit is long winded area of like the idea of like there's a mini game in this game where you run a business and you always every time the business goes in, like someone, a, a benefactor lends you a huge stack of cash. And he's like, OK, you can take this money. And the only string of tasks is that I need to see a return on my investment by you making like a certain position on like the national Japanese like index at a certain point in time. And then you end up running this business management game. We have to um, purchase buildings, hire workers, place the workers in the buildings, and then go to shareholders meetings and like beat them into submission, which is oh, really God, good. Um, so like my thought was like, well, I paid off my car last year, which is a was a pain in the butt, and I'm so glad I did because more debt found its way into my life, and I like if I had to pay for both together, woof. But being able to not have to pay that stupid car note saved me a wealth of pain, so I consider that an accomplishment as well. Got any? Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Rob's like, oh, I thought there was more narrative. About it. I, was, I was honestly like, they like, man, that's a lot going on here related to Yakuza and Pernell's life. Pernell's, Pernell's, yeah. Pernell's life is turning into a Yakuza game. Like, little well, by I little. gotta say, though, Goals. like, I can say, even, because I get, I don't think it's gonna come up on the show anytime soon otherwise, but like, it's also, it's hard to even, weird I'm saying this about a Yakuza it's game. It's fun but, to extort people. No, no, <laughs> that's just it. Though they do have an area in the game where that happens at the beginning. Okay. Um, at first, my first thought was that I didn't understand how they could take a, a franchise built around a criminal organization. Like, because literally, that is Yakuza lending money, high interest loans, and then breaking legs and, you know, protection and all that stuff. But then give you a protagonist that you root for and actually think is a good person. Like, it's a. It seems like it just they don't work together, and yet somehow, at least with this game, though I've heard people say that the earlier ones, which I'm going to get to someday, um, do similar, and that this main character, though, 
He's awesome. Like, he legitimately does cool things to help people all the time. That's his entire shtick. Mm. In fact, he had no business being a Yakuza member in the first place, to be honest. He's, he's like, like, he's like the go worst. to collect money and act like, well, I guess he didn't have it. He's good. Like, is he, like the, worst, is he like the worst Yakuza ever? Because he's in like, a good way, though. Yeah. Like, at the beginning of the game, they go to, like, you know, pick a, you know, collect on a debt. And the guy breaks into a fight with him. He's like, no, you're not going to take this. I need this money. And they start fighting, and then you beat him up. And then he he takes the wallet and he's like, looks into it and the guy's like upset because it, clearly he needed the money for something else. Like he didn't have it to give right then and there. Yakuza member like, I don't give a crap. This is my money. Find it somewhere else, you know. But he was like, he dumps the money on. Goes like, well, we got his wallet. That's what we were told to do. Here you go. <laughs> and he walks back to his boss with an empty wallet. <laughs> well, <laughs> so here you go. I still beat him up. Still got my. Still, still violent somehow. Still bonked him. Yeah. Oh, bonked. you're just now you're just taking it and just running with it. The fight was because the guy was like, I'm pushing back on you. But in the end, it was like everything he does in the game is like a noble effort. <laughs> Nothing he does is of criminal intent or ill intent. It's an unexpected thing to okay. see. And it works. I'll take that. It's good stuff. Yeah, I, 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 I'm always interested in these games. Although I, I know that I'll never spend the time to like, you know, get really get into them. They're so big. But I'm always interested in hearing about them because there's so much going on. I can at least say that with Seven, if you were to boot this up and you could avoid all the side ramble damble, it's not that long. Like, you can just do the narrative and get done that in like 15. Okay. Um, well, anyway, what's not going to happen in 15 minutes, or it's going to happen right now, is the part of the show that Purnell and I call the bonus round. Bonus round in 2021. Uh, the bonus round is where... The, not the ha- bonus stage. <laughs> not the bonus oh. stage. Oh! 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 No, that's, uh, that's copyrighted. I'll just <laughs> Pat Pitt. Pat Pitt. No, no, this is the bonus cage. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. We, have, we bring in the... tie. Ti- yeah, cage tigers. Um, no, the bonus nail. round is the part of the show where we play covers and remixes and arrangements at the end of our show. Um, and so... Um, at the end of this show, I would like to play a remix from another fighting game that I love, Street Fighter Three Third Strike. This is the jazzy New York City 99 Sunset Remix, just for a little chill interlude um, from the artist Maxi Deman.
make it with some tofu, I'll definitely eat that. It actually would be. I think so. It really would be. Like tofu? Because Chicken 65, the meat is like the least important part. It's all about what you're cooking it in. It's all the spices. 65, right. 65 spices, apparently. 65 pounds of herbs 65. and spices. So maybe uh, I'll try Tofu 65. All right, that was the jazzy New York City 99 Sunset Remix from Street Fighter 3 Third Strike by Maxi Demand. And that was music to get you in the mood for some pizza. Mm. Oh, I'm just laughing like Maxi Demand. Demand. <laughs> demand. Um, <laughs> like I'll never stop. I'll never say it in any other way. I just can't. <laughs> Demand. All right, Pernell, what's your bonus round pick? Fun fact: I don't think I have one All because right. I. That was the one thing I was like, "It's like time to come give your blood," and I'm like, "Crap." <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we have was, another. Uh, we have another to- uh, another track. Um, a submission. Let's go with that then. All right. So. so you got the, if you, I'm looking at what I'm looking at correctly, I'm going with that one then. Yeah. Which will be submitted by listener Dross. And this is the main theme titled Pure Stone from the game Zillion on the Sega Master System, composed by Tokuhiko Uwabo, Yoshiaki Koichi, Okuchi, and Shingo Kobayashi and Jun Irai. Yeah, so. Um, that's a, that's a goal of mine for this coming year is to play more Sega Master System music on the on this on the on the podcast because there's a. There's I thought a... you were talking about Persona Five on the podcast. No, no, no. We're gonna play more Master System uh, music because there's so much out there. That is there a Persona Five Master System version? Yeah, maybe we can do that. We can arrange it for the little three channel beast, the, Ooh, the Master System. Cool. All right, here we go. <laughs> to the main theme from the game Zillion, titled Pure Stone for the Sega Master System, composed by Tokuhiko Uwabo, Yoshiaki Kyuchi, Shingo Kobayashi, and Jun Irai. And it was submitted by listener Dross. And it's interesting, because every time I read that, I'm thinking Howard Drossen. Right. <laughs> Maybe it like was. Secret listener to the show, eh? I, I wish. I don't have a full name. I'm happy with Dross or Drossen, because <laughs> they're both good people, I'm sure. It'd be interesting if it was both of them. That'd be even better. <laughs> yeah, I, I had no idea that this track would fit right along with like the uh, the, the, the pumped up um, boxing track that I played earlier today. Mm-hmm. That's well. <laughs> like, Dross didn't submit a testimonial per se, just no. a track submission, which is appreciated. Ooh, I like this, and I honestly have never really heard the OST for Zillion either, so this is all new to me. Well, it's a it's a Master System game, so it's not a, there's not a lot going on. There's like one main theme that probably plays did over it, all the stages. Did it never get a port? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely emulate it. <laughs> That's what I, I thought. Think I, That's I what I'm going to do. I never saw Zillion on any, anything else besides SMS. You need to get down with the Sega Master System more than so. After that power base converter and that one neighbor who had one, that's the only exposure I ever had to the system. 
I've now never even seen down with the master, master system. system. It's hard to believe I had more exposure to the Turbo Graphics 16 than the Sega Master System. That might be the next t-shirt. It's just like, what's it called? The power converter? Just like a huge blown up power converter. Like wrapped around the t-shirt. <laughs> what? That makes sense. Like what no one printed. Yeah, no one will know what it is except for you. Like that's <laughs> No one will buy the shirt. It's gotta be something. Those who are in the know. Yeah. Will yeah. Buy the shirt. Oh, you don't know video game music if you don't know the power converter. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> power based converter. Get on with it. Get with the times. Well, for more information on the bonus round, go to rhythmandpixels.com. We'll have links to all the artists' uh, band camps and sound clouds and everywhere where you can buy the music and support the artists. All right, thank you for listening to episode 26-2 of Rhythm and Pixels. This is our look back at 2020. Not the music of 2020, but the music that makes us think of 2020 um, in a more fond way or a less fond way or um, in a way, just in a way. Yeah. Actually, I don't think any of this SE even brought up a track, whether through a listener or either of us ever. Like, this track reminds me of all the all the gruel I ate this last year. <laughs> it was disgusting. Yeah, I don't think anyone wants to, like, like linger on, on any of the bad stuff from the past year. Um, You're here to that. Had enough of that. Go forward. So, let's kind of move forward from there. Um, but yeah, so uh, we were talking about um, what games you're looking forward to in the new year. Um, Purnell, is there anything that in the new year that you're waiting for? Right now, I still kind of find myself uncertain of anything specifically. As far as the eShop has shown me, I do know that Chris Tales game is still coming where you're kind of battling in like two different like planes of reality at the same time, mm. which sounds cool. That's cool. And uh, Bravely Default 2, mm-hmm. which I like to see. I like the idea of it being like an actual home console instead of like a portable, though. I need to play through Bravely Second <laughs> before I'm like, hey, more investments. <laughs> but other than that, it's mainly... Maybe it's like whatever reviews come down the pipe for me and Backlog Mania. So I've got the Trails of Cold Steel series to get through someday by 2025, maybe. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. And then just like, like I'm still playing Octopath Traveler and just a number of just games that I just pull out of nowhere to get into. I have a lot that I'll just be scrolling through the list and go, that looks like one I'll stop on and I'll play <laughs> it. Labyrinth of Refrain, Coven of Dusky. That's another one. Just... And I started thinking about <laughs> Xenogears recently, maybe because of the Yasunori Mitsuda episode. I never finished Xenogears. The last boss took me out. And I keep telling something, maybe I should go back and try it again. Maybe I should just see that ender. <laughs> and um, Austin, is there anything uh, coming out or anything that you wanted to plug? Game, um, game-wise? Yeah. Uh, game-wise, the, I don't really keep my... Uh, I kind of just see the games when they come out. I don't really see much. But a friend of mine is releasing a video game uh, on January 7th on Steam. Uh, Street Cleaner, the video game. If you guys know Street Cleaner, the uh, synthwave musician, he's a buddy of mine. And oh, he's, cool. They're putting out like a, an NES-style uh, beat-em-up brawler game that's oh, coming out at the beginning awesome. of 2021. Yeah, Street Cleaner is good. You know, the, like well, literally, game. the only thing that makes me sad about that is the fact that I was like... Then again, my name me might be in there. I was like, I hope he gets like a Zamboni machine or one of those like street sweepers in at one point. <laughs> right. <laughs> Drive like the chase stage. Yeah, like the chase there's a chase level where he's just like <clears throat> very slowly driving the street sweeper. <laughs> 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 Try to get away. <laughs> he's very slowly getting away. <laughs> it's like that one scene in Austin Powers when the guy's driving like the the not the not a bulldozer, but like a flattener thing, and like the guy's standing there screaming as it approaches him at two miles an hour. <laughs> he can't run out of the way. Ah! Ah! <laughs> like takes a breath and keeps screaming. Yeah. Um, I'll say that I've been uh, following on Twitter um, a vertical scrolling shoot 'em up called Mechanical Star Astra, which looks really cool. Definitely Ooh. bullet hell style. Um, definitely with a lot of a lot of stuff on the screen in the vein of Giga Wing. So I'm excited about. That. And I think seeing. The, that development progress has made me really interested in getting back into bullet hell games. So um, it's always really is that fun. A Kickstarter or was it? Is it just being publicly developed? Like I think it's being publicly Twitter. developed. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, there's an itch.io. Um, that's it's, uh, nice. the artist is um, or the developer is Bog itch.io? Hog. I just think of itch.io. That's all I say. Itch.io. <laughs> <laughs> so itch.io. Alas, poor itch.io. I put all my itch.io. games on Scratch.io. Itch.io. 
Itchy and scratchy. Itchy. Oh. It's me, Itchy, my brother Scratchy. Eh? <laughs> well, um, I'd like to thank um, our guests on the show, uh, Austin and Josh. Thank you both for coming on. Thanks for having us. It's um, been a lot yes, of fun. Thank you. Yeah, I do appreciate uh, taking the time out. Good. So one last big plug for uh, Austin's band, WASD, and Josh's uh, band, The Runaway 4. And if you... Should we, are we going to mash Any together event? at any point? The, the, the runaway WASD? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I mean, you guys do a couple PC game covers in your medleys, so maybe. The yeah. WASD 4. Four keys. <laughs> but the big plug... Whoa. The big plug is bonus duels happening this Saturday, or this Saturday after this comes out, January 9th. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Over at Twitch TV slash bonus duels van... Bonus stage van. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, that's going to be running from 1 p.m. Eastern to 10 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, approximately. We might go a little bit later than that, but that's the time zone. And, yeah, lots of music, uh, video game music content and video gaming and panels and etc. Video panels, panel <laughs> gaming. Video panels, <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll have links to all of that on our website. Um, but after listening to the show, if you like what you're hearing and uh, you'd like to get in touch with us, Rob and Purnell, um, the best way to do that is by email. Rhythm and pixels at hotmail.com. Um, yeah, we'll take uh, track suggestions, topic suggestions. We have a whole list of topics, but if we, uh, we get topics in the mail, we tend to do them right away. We, we get excited Stream about that stuff. suggestions, questions, general inquiries, yeah. just a bunch of anything. Or if, if you want to write us about your favorite recipe for bouillabaisse, <laughs> write it in Delicious. we'll take that stuff um, and for a full track listing of this episode and all of our episodes and access to all of our episodes go to our website rhythmandpixels.com um, and then check us out on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter It's uh, you can just search Rhythm and Pixels and we're on all those places go to youtube.com slash Rhythm and Pixels we have a radio station there that is 24-7 and plays nothing but 8-bit and 16-bit classics and deep cuts um, I recently added some new music and added some new visuals to the to the station that's playing right now. Um, and actually, uh, our friend Michael um, from over at Forever Sound Version just gave me a, an enormous uh, a zip file of uh, Commodore 64 music he recorded from his hardware um, that wow. we're going to add to the station really soon. I'm really excited to add that to the show or to the station. Um, and then, if you'd like to support the show, um, the best thing you can do is just tell people about it. Tell people. Um, tell your family, tell your friends, uh, tell your kids, tell tell your grandparents all about the tell show. Tell to the kids. Say that you remember that like video games. Like I like the music from them, and then you know a podcast, and then explain what a podcast is, and then explain who Purnell is and who I am. Um, and then and then also you can follow us on Patreon, patreon.com slash rhythm and pixels. That's a great way to support us too. Um, from there, you get access to a, a weekly prequel episode. Um, of me and Pranel kind of chatting about current events and video games and life stuff, stuff that doesn't make it into the podcast. Um, we, uh, and you also get access to a monthly live streamed episode um, like this one uh, this month. So every month we do one of these live. You can kind of come on and hang out in the chat room and joke and you can see us, all the visual gags. It's good stuff. And if you have guests on, you can see them too. Um, and then also uh, at the higher tier levels, uh, you can get extra little goodies with the YouTube radio station. You can do your own shout out on the radio station. You can even record your own shout out on the radio station. You can plug whatever you want and I will not edit it. I'll just put it on rotation. It'll just be there for uh, until you decide that you don't want it there anymore. Um, and, <laughs> and that's great. And um, we'd like to thank all of our Patreon members at the end of every episode. Frankly Zappa, That Nick Walker, Mike Myers, Ed Wilson from the VG Embassy, Matt Honkvist, Michael Jennings, Davey Cakes, Justin Schneider from XVGM Radio, Sonic Medley, Taco, Harold Howard, Dave Taylor, Reinhardt Selkova, Andreas Milberg, Dan Loughton, Sleepy S'more, Steve Miller, The Autistic Gamer 89, Cameron Werma, Christopher Shenstrom, Bobby Arson from One Up Funk, Wicked Sephiroth, Carlos Kung Fu Carlito from the Heroes 3 podcast, a podcast all about Asian cinema and Kung Fu movies. It's really cool. Um, uh, Michael Bridgewater from the Forever Sound version VGM podcast and Brian Pitt. So thank you all and, and many more, but thank you all very, very much for your continued support of this show. I want to give one last shout out to Hammock from KVGM, The Last Wave. He'll be making an appearance later this month, but he just released uh, or just uh, uh, put online his Patreon page 
for exclusive content from his show called uh, The Last Wave After Dark. So I'm assuming it's going to be some extra sexy tunes because his show is all about the sexy, smooth tunes. Already. Or music at a camp. You can listen to it at a campfire. Yeah, I mean, or camp- that's possible. <laughs> yeah, it's all campfire music. Yeah, Camp Town Races, <laughs> play this jam, do da. It's great. It's Kumbaya through the Sega Master System sound hardware. <laughs> you never know. That kind of sounds kind of weird, but it works in, a, in its own little way. Anyway, thank you all very much for your continued support of this show. Um, I next- would also say, I meant to ask, I wanted to add this because I would forget if I didn't. Also, um, down the line, if you're interested in checking out some other random bric-a-brac that I'm doing, um, I've mentioned them on the show in the past, but just figured it couldn't hurt to do it at the tail, too. Um, Indie Guide In, which is a show that I'm on with some friends where we just kind of discuss game. Like, we kind of have like a, a book, it's like a book club for indie games where you choose a game, play it for like a week or two, and then we discuss it. Um, that's Indie Guide In, that's a show. And then, of course, the as usual, SML podcast for mm-hmm. reviews and general nonsensical banter. Right. Uh, but just fun times. Yeah, and you can also follow Purnell on Twitch, twitch.tv slash pure Nell. Pure Nell. You remember the do you remember the you are hobby John yeah, Brown? I remember that. It's always pure Nell. It's the that purest is true. of the Nell. And uh, diluted. Yeah, and if you want to watch me struggle through some hardcore DDR stuff, it's a uh, twitch.tv slash Rabumon. It's like Pokemon, but with He Rob's. gets it in. Don't let him fool you. Yeah, I saw my, my breakdown. I, I wear a heart rate monitor, so you can see how bad I'm struggling. But I, by the the amount of calories I burn this year is pretty intense. Um, so I'm, and then, of course, I'm wondering about fatigue, and then that's that's the answer right there. Um, anyway, right. I want to thanks thanks again to Josh and Austin for being on our show. Um, I want to thanks to all of our sponsors, KFC, McDonald's, Burger King, um, Burger, epi- Burger Palace. Yeah, Burger Palace. This <laughs> walk, episode walk Lord. is uh, brought to you by Texas Instruments. And <laughs> we'll see you next week is another special episode. We have um, our guest Chris Baines is coming on. It's a very it's a completely different oh, format. It is the big fat quiz show of 2021. Um, Chris Baines is essentially hosting it, and me and Purnell have to uh, name that tune. It's going to be rough. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so look out for that. That's next I'm Wednesday. Bullets. Yeah. Um, all right. So thanks, everybody, for the show. This is Rhythm and Pixels. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Purnell. Have a good week. We'll see you next time. And remember, well, funny enough, I don't have a whole lot to say this one, but what I can say is that. Uh, it's one thing to find yourself kind of in a bit of a haze. This is definitely the time to find yourself in one. People get caught up in the idea of like new year, new you and reinventions and rediscoveries and understanding of the self and all that jazz. Um, but if you find yourself in that element where you feel as though you don't know up from down or right, from, well, right from wrong, that's another thing. But um, up from down or which way you should be going, going forward, there is that is what that's what life's all about you can actually take that time to step away and reevaluate yourself you can always do that you're not locked into anything regardless of what you've been told or believed you're not locked into any direction you can change it up and figure things out and re- realign yourself but what's important is that you realize that that's something that you have the power and ability to do and actually sit down and focus and come up with something for yourself so take the time Realign yourself if you need to get your car back on the road. No need for you know inspection because that costs like six hundred bucks, man. With that car dealer, <laughs> you don't want them touching your car. Do it yourself. The heck with that. <laughs> I like the end of the show. With that. <laughs>